No matter where you live, there's no doubt that energy is one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century. Scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs around the world are working on solutions to increase energy efficiency and slow the growth of greenhouse gases. At the same time, we must meet the increasing energy demands of a growing population, especially our largest cities. We need sustainable solutions that will work on a large scale, and we need them today. What if there were a proven energy technology that could help us be more energy efficient right now, not years from now? What if there were an energy technology that could increase energy security right now, not years from now? What if there were an energy technology that could serve as vital infrastructure for cities, campuses, and communities, and provide high quality jobs today, not years from now? Well, there is such a technology, and it's already here. It's called district energy. District energy is all around us, operating in cities from New York to Paris, from Dubai to Copenhagen. Landmark buildings like the U.S. Capitol, the Kremlin, and the Louvre get their heating or cooling from a district energy system. Around the globe, most major cities and college campuses are served by district energy. Even world-famous medical centers such as the Mayo Clinic and the Texas Medical Center depend on district energy. Why? Because of its compelling economics and outstanding reliability. Available round the clock from qualified energy professionals. Maybe you haven't heard much about district energy. That's because it's been quietly doing its job, keeping people comfortable and conserving energy for decades, in some places for more than a century. But it's time to let the secret out. District energy is all around us. It's right under your feet. Here's how it works. Heating and cooling are provided to multiple buildings from a central energy plant. Steam, hot water, or chilled water from the plant is transmitted 24-7 via underground pipes to customer buildings. The heating and cooling energy is transferred to the building's heating and air conditioning system, keeping everyone comfortable day and night. Buildings and communities with a district energy system don't need to own or operate their own boilers, chillers, and cooling towers. They can choose to connect to the district energy network. That reduces upfront capital costs. It also saves valuable space that might otherwise be dedicated to heating, cooling, and related production equipment. In fact, buildings connected to a district energy system are easier to operate, have lower life cycle costs, and reduce or even eliminate on-site emissions. Customers can take the precise amount of energy they need whenever they need it. But why is a centralized system better than boilers and chillers in every building all over town? District energy aggregates the heating and cooling needs of dozens or even hundreds of buildings, creating tremendous economies of scale and efficiency. An economy of scale creates opportunities. Opportunities to run central plants at optimal efficiency, rather than many individual systems at part load. Opportunities for combined heat and power where the useful energy is more fully utilized. And opportunities where the community scale makes it feasible to use even lower carbon energy sources like surplus heat, biomass, lake or ocean water, or geothermal energy. For example, district energy plants can run on multiple fuels. This gives them the flexibility to switch to less expensive fuels as market conditions change. That's not a practical option for most individual buildings. In many cases, a district energy system can incorporate highly efficient combined heat and power technology. This can significantly increase the efficiency of a power plant. Simply put, combined heat and power captures the waste heat created when making electricity and puts it to use to heat buildings or drive chillers. By recovering the waste heat and making it useful, we reduce overall fuel consumption and fewer emissions are released into the atmosphere. And since less heat is exhausted into nearby waterways as compared to conventional plants, this helps the environment. New York City figured this out more than 100 years ago. Consolidated Edison of New York operates one of the world's largest district energy systems, serving around 1,800 buildings in Manhattan. More than 50% of its steam is produced by cogeneration units, which are a highly efficient form of combined heat and power technology. Customers use the steam for space heating, domestic hot water production, and air conditioning. In fact, New York City avoids about 350 megawatts of electricity on its power grid because customers use steam-driven chillers for air conditioning. 
thousands of communities, large and small, are enjoying the many benefits of district energy. The University of Texas at Austin is one of the largest public universities in the U.S. Its combined heat and power plant has produced 100% of the electricity used on campus since 1929. The plant co-generates steam that's piped throughout the campus. District cooling is provided by four additional plants. A chilled water thermal storage tank is currently under construction. Investments in energy efficiency improvements saved $170 million worth of energy between 1996 and 2008. With its highly efficient combined heat and power system, UT Austin has essentially achieved carbon neutral growth. Additional projects slated for completion in 2010 will return the campus to 1977 fuel consumption and emissions levels, even though the campus has added 7 million square feet of building space. District Energy St. Paul operates a combined heat and power facility where 70% of the annual fuel is supplied by municipal wood residue. Using wood residue that would otherwise be piling up in local landfills has helped stabilize fuel costs and reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 280,000 tons a year. The district heating and cooling system serve most of the downtown buildings and 25 megawatts of electricity is supplied to the local grid. The district cooling system makes chilled water at night when electric rates are low and stores it in large tanks until needed by customers. Northwind Phoenix, a subsidiary of APS Energy Services, serves buildings in downtown Phoenix. One of the company's first district cooling customers was Chase Field, home to the Arizona Diamondbacks. In 2001, Northwind Phoenix built an ice-based thermal storage plant adjacent to the stadium and in 2006 added more ice storage at a new plant inside the Phoenix Convention Center. On average, customers report a 13% drop in energy use following their connection to district cooling. District cooling systems reduce electric demand during peak periods and can help lower energy consumption overall. By replacing on-site chillers with district cooling service, customers can level out their electricity demand. This reduces the strain on the grid, cuts emissions, and reduces the need for costly new power plants. Around the world, you'll find district energy systems at the center of innovation. Solar district heating in Denmark and Sweden, deep lake water district cooling in Toronto, combined heat and power fueled by oat hulls at the University of Iowa, geothermal based district heating in Turkey, combined heat and power fueled by landfill gas at UCLA. The list goes on. These are all different solutions but none of them would be feasible without a district energy system that combines the energy needs of multiple buildings and has the scale to make these innovations possible. Just think about the thousands of district energy systems that are already saving energy and helping the environment. What if even more district energy systems could be constructed, cutting energy consumption and reducing the carbon footprint for the world's fast-growing cities? What if we could help existing district energy systems expand or invest in combined heat and power, biomass, geothermal, and other clean technologies to help make the power grid even stronger and smarter. What if we could use district energy infrastructure to utilize local energy resources, create quality jobs, and keep energy dollars recirculating in local economies? What if we could do this right now, today? We can do all of this and more. District energy is the foundation for a smart, sustainable energy future. Let's take control of that future by investing in district energy. Tomorrow's energy, today.